just on any for, on formal systems and on you know the formal ways of solving these problems. We literally have to unleash the creativity and innovation of our young people to address the very huge problems that we, we, we are confronting that are, and we will confront in the years to come. In agriculture, a number of innovations have been introduced in the last three years, and we have seen crop yields rise as much as threefold to fourfold, bringing greater prosperity to smallholder farmers. Our rice revolution is a developing story, which we believe is worth paying attention to in terms of the transformative effect that is having on rural economies across the country. When President Mohamed Buhari took office almost three years ago, uppermost in our minds as a government was how to ensure that our policies and programs were focused on improving the well-being of the people of this country. You might recall that previous years of high oil prices and economic growth had failed to translate to a better life for most Nigerians. And of course, you know, we've had the emphasis, we've talked about why, in many cases, grand corruption, waste and, and leakages, preventing investments in healthcare, and education and infrastructure and from, uh, from profiting any of these areas of our lives. But I think that the most important focus for us now is that we are completely determined to, to ensure that we make the kind of progress that will rewrite the story of our country. To put Nigeria's money to work for Nigerians, doing the most with the least that we earn. And we have stayed true to that vision. Even as oil prices went into free fall, we've ramped up investments in infrastructure, as well as our social spending. We are aggressively expanding government revenues by plugging leakages and widening the tax net to ensure that government is able to invest more in the things that matter. But I want to just emphasize that, especially with respect to spending on education and spending on healthcare, there are so many various uh, areas in which spending is going on. And I was speaking to the Minister of Finance about doing a desk review just so that we can dimension the exact, how much exactly is being spent. There's a lot of private, there's a lot of private intervention. There's a lot of intervention at the level of government, local governments. In education, for instance, we have TED Fund, we have UBEC, we have several different, uh, we have several different places where money is being spent. I think it's important for us to dimension what exactly it is that we are spending on education and healthcare so that we're able to spend smarter because in some cases you find overlaps and in some cases you find that there is nothing going there whatsoever. So I think that the first thing and uh, the Minister of uh, Finance has said that this is something that you'll be willing to do is to dimension, that, uh, to dimension the exact quantum of the spending and also the, the, the areas where this is being spent, who is spending it and how we can, you know, how we can spend more smartly and then look at how to ramp up the spending in a, in, in, in a manner that takes into account what is being spent uh, already. Most importantly also, we are creating an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive. Succeeding at this means unleashing many more of the Aliko Dangotes with all uh, that represents for our growing economy, jobs, and more jobs, and countless opportunities for the kind of world-changing uh, philanthropy that uh, both Aliko Dangote and, of course, Bill Gates uh, have come to embody. We acknowledge that there is a lot of work ahead of us. Our education and health budgets at all levels of government are nowhere near optimal levels, but I can assure you that we possess the political will and vision to make the needed investments for today and for tomorrow, and that we are on the path of progress. It's also clear that we cannot and must not attempt to do it alone. That's why we are immensely grateful for the generous partnership from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Dangote Foundation, as well as our numerous uh, development partners who are here. We just heard from uh, Debbie of uh, DFID and, of course, Rashid of the World Bank and so many of our development partners who have stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with us in ensuring that we're able to deliver the human uh, development goals that we have set for ourselves. We'll continue to welcome 
uh, your support and also hope that it will inspire other partners at home and abroad to follow in your footsteps. We'll do everything in our power to ensure that you have the right environment for your transformational work and we trust that we can continue to count on you as friends and partners well into the future. I thank you all very much for listening. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Vice President. Um, that brings us to the end of the open session, uh, which means uh, gentlemen of the press will now uh, depart from the hall as we are going into closed session, uh, where we will have further discussion on all the issues uh, raised. So we will allow uh, a few minutes for gentlemen of the press to withdraw. Uh, please uh, let us do this as quickly as possible so that the next session can begin. Thank you very much indeed for your support. We appreciate it. You've been watching a live broadcast of the expanded National Economic Council on Investment in Human Capital, where development partners both from the foreign scene and local partners discussed areas of human capital, especially in health and education. You're watching Channels Television, reaching live from Lagos, Nigeria. We now continue with our usual programming for the day.